Hey, welcome back to uh, Adventure World with the Godot programming engine. Uh, in this video, I'd like to keep it a little bit short because the last one ran uh, way too long. And But it's really exciting, or I'm really excited, because uh, we've got so many things we can do at this point. But one thing that was uh, a little unsettling to me in the last video was when the player passes out, we just kind of uh, lock their controls and, and, and don't give them much feedback. So we're going to add a... Uh, overlay uh, to our screen and kind of darken the screen and then we're going to add a uh, some letters to say you know that the game is over all right and then in the fu in a future video we'll send them to the main menu from there so to do this let's add another ca uh, canvas item like what we did before for the the HUD we're going to add a new one and we're going to animate it using this animation player so let's go here add child and canvas layer we'll call this one game over canvas layer I don't know how much uh, cost there is to implementing these so there's the possibility that uh, if you were coordinated you could put them all under one canvas layer but I don't think for a small game like this that we're gonna have any problems doing this so let's go ahead and make a new one and under that we will add I could add a texture and stretch it to fit the whole si scene, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this color rect, and that'll let, allow me to just draw a rectangle and add apply a color to it, which is exactly what we want to do here. So this would be a little bit uh, more efficient and save me from having to go and make a picture. So for this, uh, what we can do in order to stretch it, and I don't think we've used these in the past, but we can use this anchor and margin properties to stretch it to fill our entire viewport. Now I could just mash in the numbers here in the, the uh, rectangle. I could set the size to be the width of the screen, which I think is like 1024 or something. So I could do that, right? But let's, let's try this uh, other method uh, so that we learn something new. So uh, this is a number from zero to one, so if I want to go all the way to the right, I just use the number one. Now you notice I changed that, but nothing happened. And the reason is, is Godot comes down here and automatically adjusts my margin so that my rectangle doesn't change size. So if I adjust this, uh, my right uh, anchor is now on the right hand side, but my margin is zero and therefore it stretches all the way across. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, top and bottom. And adjust that it automatically adjusts that number I'll set it to zero now we stretch across the entire screen so <clears throat> I want to make this a black because we want to darken our screen and I want to adjust the opacity so there so I can see through it you can kind of see the player right up there and I think uh, from my previous playing around like a number around 150 looks pretty good uh, so we'll use that but you can pick whatever you'd like if you'd like a lighter color like that so it just darkens it just a little bit you can do that or if you want to make it completely black you can just leave it completely opaque like that alright so we've got our background back drop um, and we could even rename that backdrop so we could call it uh, back drop color rect and let's add to that let's add a uh, overlay uh, excuse me some letters so I could do a label and use Godot's built-in letters but <clears throat> when I stretch it out it's gonna be uh, kind of pixelated and not look so great and I could fix that by then further uh, picking a custom font and applying that and so on and so forth but uh, I'm gonna just make a picture and the reason I'm gonna do that is because you could also um, apply any kind of uh, effects that you wanted to so I'm gonna jump over here to paint.net real simple paint program and I'm just going to create a new image. I don't care how big it is right now because, or I need it to be larger than my size, but I don't care how big it is because I'm going to crop it down to size. So I'm just going to say game over. Now I've got my text as white and I could change that to black so you could see it, but I actually want to leave it as white because I want to um, be able to adjust it within the game engine. However, I have this white background which one is making it really hard to see my text but also would not give me the effect I want I need to select all using control a or you could grab this uh, rectangle and just grab the whole screen and hit delete key and that'll give me this uh, checker background which is uh, kind of an indication that um, everything's been deleted and so I'm, there's actually no pixels there and not just uh, a white pixel and so I'm gonna do apply my text again so let's do game over now I can kinda see it there um, and so what I want to do 
I could add some uh, effects here. So if I wanted to, uh, let's see, I could grab my eraser and I could come in here and I could kind of uh, make, you know, like a, I could make some bullet holes or something. Like that. Um, and so you could go wild. We'll just leave that so you can kind of see it. Uh, I do want to save this, but first I want to crop it down. So my image is really big and my text is only a small piece of that. So what I want to do is use the crop tool. So I'm going to select an area and I'm going to grab it as close as I can there without going too wild. Uh, we don't have to get perfect, but I want to get it approximately. And then I want to crop. And so to do that, usually under uh, like image or selection, there's a crop to selection. And what that'll do is it'll cut away the rest of the image except for what was in that selected box. So this looks really good and I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go file, save as. And I want to save it as a PNG file. And so then I'm going to dig into my project folder, save it under art. And then I'm going to use the HUD folder. And we'll just call this like title game over. And I'll save that OK. Now when I jump back to Godot, I see that importing message real quickly pop up. And here for my texture, uh, texture rect, I can go and apply that image by drilling in here and I see my title game over that I just made. Drag that into texture and there we go. Uh, you can use the, I could drag this around and position it there, um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and, and kind of, since we're kind of learning this uh, anchor and margin, we'll go ahead and uh, try and figure it out this way. So um, you can actually see when I position these, what I'm do actually doing, what Godot's doing, is it's leaving the anchors at the top corner here, and uh, it's adjusting the margins to position my um, object where, where I want. I'm trying to put it. So what I can do here, uh, I want to go halfway, right? So I want it in the center. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and of course, Godot fixed these for me. But if I change the left to zero and the top to zero, what actually happened here is the top left corner of my um, control is now perfectly centered in the screen. And that's not quite what I want. What I really want is like the dead center of the object to be centered there. I don't know if there's a center. Uh, there may be. But, uh, well, let's try this just real quick to see. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, that works. <laughs> so what it did here uh, is actually exactly what I was going to manually do. And that's uh, it uses 0.5 and 0.5 for the the anchors, and it actually applies it to the right and bottom as well. So that's this side of the the control, and then it adjusts the margins so that it's half the image width. So if we looked at the rectangle and we looked at the size, so we've got uh, say 53 for the height. So what it did for the top is it divided 53 by two, and then added that. As a negative number, so um, so our image was previously like right there, so it moved it up 26 pixels, I believe it was, and uh, that's how it, oops, that's how it figured that out. But yeah, this is great. Um, you just click a button and it's there. So uh, I learned something new. Excellent. So all right, so we've got our game over positioned, and I promised that we were going to color it a different color. So uh, we've done that before. We use the visibility with the modulate, and we can just make it a nice red here, make it a nice bright red there. And now you can kind of see our bullet holes a lot better. Looks good. Uh, you know, if I was, uh, I may, I may go back and apply a few more bullet holes off screen, um, but you saw how that was done. So we've got our game over and we've got our backdrop. Now let's animate it. So let's go to our animation player. Now I do want to add to the setup. I want to hide these things by default. So what I can do to do that is, because uh, if we run this right now, what will happen is our game over will display from the start. And even though I can play, I'm getting that game over and that's not ideal. So what we want to do is disable this to start. So all I have to do is go to the visibility, disable the visibility, and I want to make sure I'm on my animation player on the setup animation because remember this one runs by default when the scene starts and I want to keyframe that 
And what that'll do is that'll record that I want my, this visibility to be turned off when the game starts. So that's excellent. So now I want to make a new animation and I'm going to call this game over. And in this animation, what we're going to do, let's extend it out a couple more seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, re-enable this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll flip that back on and keyframe that. So we want to turn that on. Then we want to take these from being completely transparent to bringing them into this level. So, or bringing them into this visibility. And I'm going to do both the background and this uh, subtext separately so that we get kind of a cool uh, animation. Now, because we're doing this in an animation player, you can apply all kinds of animations. We could take this background and we could slide it in. We could take two backgrounds and slide them together. You could um, use an image and have like a star or something and you could rotate and scale it so that I think Mario does something like that. Um, at least in the older ones that I played when I was a kid. So uh, you could do all sorts of stuff because we're using this animation player. And these are all things that you've kind of already learned. So let's jump right in and do this uh, transparency. So I've already made them visible, but what I want to do is modulate. Uh, I could either do it with the modulation, but I'm going to do it up here in the color because I'm already adjusting this one. So I'm going to make it completely, uh, I'm going to set the alpha to zero so that it's completely transparent. And let's record that as a new track. And then we're going to additionally do the uh, texture rec, which is our game over message. Uh, and we're going to do that with the, the um, modulation. So we'll modulate. And again, we'll set that to fully transparent and keyframe that. All right, so now we've got everything keyframed that I believe we need. And what we're going to do is we're going to move out to, uh, let's say, we want the background to pull in faster. So let's do that around. 0.4, all right? So between 0 and 0.4, we're going to fade the background in. And so what I'm going to do is click on the background. I've selected 0.4 for my time. And I want to go up here to color. I want to bring that alpha back up. And I think 150 was about where it was at. Uh, of course, this isn't super important exactly the number, but um, 150 I think looked pretty good. So then we'll keyframe that right here. So between uh, 0 and 0.4, this is going to fade in. And then we want to start fading in the uh, game over message. So uh, we're going to keyframe that, the uh, modulation right here. And the reason is, and it'll do this line, which means it stays the same. The reason we're doing that is because if we set out here, let's say at 1, we're going to uh, modulate that all the way in. So we're going to go all the way opaque at 255, and we'll keyframe that. So if we'd not put this note in, this would animate over this entire period. So by doing, by putting this in, it won't start changing until uh, this point four. So let's go ahead and watch this animation and see what happens. So there we go. So the background fades in first, and then the letters start fading in, which is great. That's what we want. So. I could uh, elongate this out, but I, th I think this looks pretty good. But what I do want to do, uh, well, we'll go ahead and do the player script first. So here in the passout function, what, what we had was we played the passout animation, and we could have applied this new animations to this. But what I'd like to do is keep them separately so that uh, we could inject some code in between if we wanted to. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use that yield function that we used before on the knockback. And we're going to use it here in the passout so that we can um, apply some more code after the passout animation plays. And what we're going to do is we're going to play our new animation. So we called it uh, Game Over, right? Yep, Game Over. So this should play the Game Over animation. And I want to yield again. And at the end, we're going to print a message to say go to main menu. And uh, this is just kind of an indicator for what we'll do in the future. We'll, we'll go to the main menu after that happens. So let's play this and ooh, one other thing I'm going to change. I've got three hearts by default now. Let's cut that down to two so that our demo time is not as long. So I'm going to run into the spikes, run into them again. I pass out and then my animation plays. Looks great. All right. And then if you saw after a short period, this displayed. And you can adjust that by going into your animation 
and just extend the window out. So let's go to five seconds. That'll give them uh, four whole seconds to see the uh, game over message before we're going to jump them to the um, main menu. So there they pass out. We see the message. One, two, three, four, and there's the go to main menu. I counted a little fast. And so um, that's it for this video. Next video, I probably, uh, there's so many things we could work on. I'm really excited. Uh, but we'll probably do the main menu. Uh, it's not as exciting, but uh, it's kind of needed. And I kind of like to wrap up um, turning this into a whole game. And then what we'll do from there, or, uh, uh, you know, a complete. Uh, process and then from there what we'll do is go ahead and try and figure out um, uh, some stuff to fill in to make the game fun so anyways thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and see you next time